Hi, my name is Katie Bartz from SewingScene.com and I'd like to welcome you to another Extreme Beginning Tutorial in Inkscape. Today's topic is Opening and Saving Files. Okay, our topics today are going to on how to open a file and how to save a file in Inkscape. So there's several ways to do both. So I'd like to walk you through the different options so you can choose your favorite. The first way to open a file is to go to the file menu and click on the open command and then you will have a dialog box that will show you a list of files. Now this button that you will see right here allows you to view your files differently. So if you want you might be seeing something like this on your screen which shows you a list of files. right? If you have this selected you might be able to open large icons and actually see some of the graphics that are in your particular uh, computer. right? So let's just change this back to list. Uh, most of you will probably be at either at list or at details view. But if I wanted to open for example circle.svg what I need to do is simply click on that file. It will show you a thumbnail of what that picture looks like. So if I were to change different things down here, different file names, the picture on this thumbnail will change. So if that's the file you wanted to open, all you need to do is click on open itself. Now open, you can see, is highlighted a little bit darker than the cancel button. So this is considered to be what they call a default button. That means if I were to double click on the file circle.svg, it would be selecting the file and clicking on the open button uh, simultaneously. So let's go ahead and double click. So it selected the file and it clicked open at the same time. All right. So the next way we're going to open a file is to use the file open icon. When I click on that particular button, again, the same dialog box is going to come open and simply, again, double clicking on the file that you want will open that file into your workspace. And it will open it actually in a separate file. Okay, so you'll have two copies of, or two windows of Inkscape working on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that so I don't um, confuse you with the screens here. The next way to open a file is to actually use the import command. So if I go to the file menu, click on import, you'll see that it actually has a very similar <laughs> same dialog box. And again, if I select the particular file uh, that I want to open, it will allow me to do that. But what makes open different than import is when I used the open command before. Let's say if I said file open and I wanted to open this leaf picture right here. If I select clicked on open at this point, it would open this leaf document in a separate workspace area. But maybe I actually want to use this graphic and put some text on this, but the text that I want to use, for example, under File, Import, is this text right here. Right? Rather than opening it in a separate document and then having to either copy and paste or cut and paste into another document to make it work, using the Import command allows you to actually import and open that file in the existing file. Right? That makes it really handy because maybe you actually want to go ahead and you know size this smaller and make this one larger. And if I select them both by holding my shift key down and clicking on Katie, I can come over here to the align and distribute properties window. I can align vertically and horizontally and now those two files are open but the file name is going to be the first name that I actually opened 
because it's importing it into the circle SVG file. Right. Now, before I exit out of this and uh, show you how to save this file, I'm going to duplicate this particular document or graphic using what we call the drag and drop method. So very quickly, I'm going to go ahead and close out of my document without saving, and I'm going to go ahead and reopen Inkspace so that I can give you another option on opening a file. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and leave this file, or this window, uh, smaller, and I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer uh, window, and I'm going to size them both so I can at least see both of them on the screen at the same time. When I do that, I'm able then to actually select the file, drag it, and drop it into the document. And just like the import command, all right, so this would be like import 2.0, I can take this file and also drop that into this particular file. By using the drag and drop method and a brand new document, I don't have a document name specified yet, so I'm kind of creating this from scratch. But the beauty of using the drag and drop method is again, it allows you to open multiple files at the same time. Now let me just go ahead and maximize that window so it takes up the full screen. Now you notice I didn't hit this button over here on the right hand side. This is your maximize and restore button. If I click it again, it restores this window to the size it was before I maximized it. I like shortcuts. So in any Windows program, when you double click on the title bar, it will either maximize your window, or again, if I double click on that, I can restore it to the original size. Now, why is that helpful? Well, if, for example, my window, for some reason I had to move these on my screen better so I could see them both on the screen, and my maximize window uh, button is not visible on the screen. That won't matter because I can double click on this title bar anywhere to maximize that window to make it larger. Holding the control key down on your keyboard while you scroll, your mouse wheel will allow you to zoom in on the area. And we're going to talk about all these different shortcuts, tips and tricks as we go through and continue progressing through our tutorials. But maybe Again, I wanted to go ahead and make this circle larger. I'm going to go ahead and hold Control and Shift on my keyboard while I drag, and that sizes the design again from the center out that we learned in the previous tutorial. And right now the circle is selected. To select the name Katie, what I need to do is hold my Shift key on my keyboard and simply click on it. And now you can see the marquee is around both objects. I can then go ahead, once again, go to my Align and Distribute menu and align vertically and align horizontally. All right. So now I have this object here and I want to save it. So let's talk about saving our documents. Once you have the items exactly the way you want it, um, sometimes you can, I like to save these files periodically so I don't lose any of the work that I've done. But initially we first have to give this particular file a name. If I look up here on the title bar in the left hand corner it says new document. All right, That's not a very useful name. So the first time you save a document I'd like you to get in the habit of using the save as command. Using the Save As command allows you to come to this dialog box, which you can actually type in a name. All right, and I named this here before, but let's go ahead and give it a new name. Let's call it Circle Name, and I won't have to put the .svg behind it because it will automatically, but I want you to get in the habit of naming your things, capitalize the first initial, of the first word and the next word. As you can see that that's easy to read. I don't put spaces in my file names because then I never have to remember or ask myself, did I put a space 
in that name because if you're searching for it on your computer and you didn't put a space in it but you're searching with it for a space you won't find that file name so you can see in all my file names up here I do not have any spaces in them I just designate the words each unique word with a capital letter and that makes it really easy to uh, read then go ahead and click on uh, before we click on save let's talk about the different file types inkscape.svg is the default SVG file format but I have a tendency to lean towards the plain SVG file format. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic and that particular file is importable and, and can work on multiple devices uh, because it is a vector file. All right. So for example, I can use a plain SVG file in my digitizing software. I can use a plain SVG file in my cutting machine if I'm going to be cutting some vinyl or be cut, cutting fabric for a quilt applique, for example. Uh, and it will actually even print out when you just say file print. So it makes it very versatile. versatile. But the, the beauty of saving it with the SVG format is because it is a vector file, the objects in there are scalable and they won't have that pixelating capability. Now we're going to talk more about how to prepare your documents for uh, saving as a vector file in future tutorials, but I did cover it also in the last tutorial, so please don't hesitate to go back and review that on how to make your graphics true vector graphics and vector art to work in those other applications. So plain SVG is what you're going to use probably 99% of the time. The other options that you're probably going to use on a regular basis are portable document format. So for example, if you want to save this as circle name .pdf, you're creating flyers for a, a birthday party or a garage sale or something coming up. You can save it as a PDF file, take it down to your local office store, and they can print that file out because it is a PDF file for you, whether they want to make a poster or you want just a bunch of uh, eight and a half by 11 sheets made up or even postcards you know whatever it is but portable document formats PDF files can be read by a Mac or a Windows computer and others as well the other file formats you might want to consider or just know that they are here is an EPS format that's encapsulated postscript Many digitizing software applications use that. Or if you want to take this graphic and bring it back into, let's say, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, you could bring it in as a encapsulated postscript file, which is a vector, a more powerful uh, vector file. And then the last one I wanted to highlight here is this DXF file format. Um, sometimes if you have a silhouette cutter, Sometimes the outlines of the cutting lines are uh, displayed easier if it's saved in DXF format. All right. So those particular files, formats, are what we're going to be using. The plain SVG, PDF, maybe EPS, WMF you'll probably use also. We'll talk about that in future tutorials. And the DXF. So at this time, go ahead and click on plain SVG. I'm going to click on save and just to make sure it's there if I go here to open recent you can see that circle name .svg now is available in this list and it will be located on my hard drive at this point right now since this file name is saved as circle name .svg if I go under the file menu you can see that there's still a save command you would use the save command to give this file this or this document the same name. So for example, if I come over to the circle and I wanted to make the circle, let's say uh, teal blue. All right, and I made that change. 
I can come up here to the file menu, click on save, or even better yet, start memorizing these shortcut keystrokes. Control S for save. If I go ahead to this document and I press control, control S, it has now saved this document with the recent changes. My background is no longer, you know, pink or green. It is this aqua teal color and that's the way when I open the file that it will come up. So I hope you learned a little bit today about opening your files using the file menu, the file icon, and the, the beauty of using the import command, as well as utilizing the drag and drop method of opening a file, which is another way of basically importing your files into one file. And we talked about using the save command. So the first time you save, you use save as, and then subsequently you can just use save when you're going to use the same file name. Our next tutorial is going to go and talk about text and how to create and manipulate and work with text. And there will be a couple parts to that tutorial. So we'll have a one or two part series on that because there's a lot to learn about working with text. And I want to thank you for joining me and we'll see you in the next tutorial.